In this lesson, I'm going to show you about the filter section. So we've already done a little bit in there, but let's grab a photo. Let's grab this lake. And just a suggestion, but when you're working in Photoshop, it is better to close out of uh, other applications because Photoshop uses a lot of memory. And even like right now, I don't have anything else open, but it takes a little bit to load. All right. So this is 16 bits, so you notice some of the filters are grayed out. So let's change it to um, 8 bits so we can utilize all the filters. All right, now they're all available, you notice. Okay. Extract. Let's try to extract this boat. Now we can change our brush size, obviously, here. And basically, you're going to try to enclose the area of the boat. Like, I'm going to try to grab. Like so then grab the bucket and fill in. Here's where you could change your your highlight or your fill color. And let's say you're working with a green picture or a purple picture. Well, you wouldn't be able to really see where you were coloring, so um, you might want to change those colors just for visibility's sake. Um, so let's hit OK. See, now it kind of grabbed the boat but because it's mixed in with the water, it's kind of hard. Let's see if we can make it look good on another picture. So let's open that ocean picture. Maybe this one. I'm thinking of trying to put that boat out in the water is what I'm thinking. So, let's see if we can pull it off. All right, here. Let's take the move tool so we can move that around now. And I'm going to move it over here. Oh, look at that. Interesting. So if we wanted to make it bigger, we would edit transform, all right, the scale. We could make it a little bit larger. Mm. Like so. It kind of looks like there's a boat out there on the water, but the uh, we could have done probably a better job on the selection side of it. So let's let's go back. We'll go back here. And let's try to better select that. So let's go to filter. Oops. Change the mode back to 8 again. Let's go to Extract. Now let's pick a smaller brush size for one thing. That's too small. Let's go to like to 25. Yeah, that looks right. Okay. And let's use Smart Highlighting. Now Smart Highlighting tries to find the edge for you. It'll hug the edge of the picture. Let's zoom in because I can't see that very well. All right, we'll go back to here. Yeah, and if you notice as you drag along the edge, it's kind of highlighting for you. It's picking the edge for you. It's trying to find 
that edge even though it'll be hard because of this grass here it's not a well-defined edge if you know what I mean Oops. But it is nice because it's looking for the edge. I gotta move it over a little bit. Because I want to get that ore. Alright. Alright, let's continue with our attempted. And if once you actually do this, you'll feel that it's moving. It's trying to highlight for you. All right. Now we're going to fill. And now let's see if that does a better job extracting. Ah, see, that is better. See, it, it looks much more solid. So now let's try dragging it over to our beach scene. Like so, and let's put it out in the water somewhere. And I'm going to lower the opacity a little bit because I think it's just too bright out there. Yeah, that looks pretty good. It looks like there is an old boat out there laying up, washed up against the rocks. Okay, so there's a quick example of using filter and extract. And there's a few other um, uh, adjustments you can make within Extract that you can experiment with later on. If you're dealing with a textured image, forcing the foreground, um, you can use the eyedropper tool to make selections. So anyway, there's one example of where you might want to extract something from one picture and bring it to the other.